So these are free items that I touch and handle and use 50, 60 times every single day of the week. It's extremely helpful, and again, it's free. Hey, it's done. Today we're going to look at something that's free that you're throwing away probably right now that has a ton of uses in reselling across the board. And we're also going to look real quick at something that's completely reusable and a great way to store items over and over and over and over and over again. So believe it or not, one of the most useful free tools that I personally uh, mess with are these rolls. Now these are the inside core from your tape rolls. Now, again, it may sound like something stupid. What the heck are you ever going to do with these? But I save every single one of these. I've saved them for years. We've got, I don't know, 500, 1,000 of these being used in the building at any given time. And that's no lie. I use every single one of them. We have multiple dispensers, so we go through them fairly quickly. Uh, they fit in all sorts of different things here. Let me show you some of the combinations of what we use these for here. Now, if they're in containers, they're great for backing so the cards don't fall. So if you're lining up, say, a bunch of cards in here, you can fill it up with these depending on where you're at. You can use one if it's a smaller space. The biggest thing, too, these are free. It only takes a few pennies worth of tape to tape them together. If you've got something bigger in here and you want it to stay like this, Otherwise, it's hard to keep this stuff in the container. So I use these for literally every single bin in here that has anything. You can mail stuff in here too if you want. You just wrap tape in, in like a X pattern and whatever you want inside there. So they're perfect for mailing as well. This fits in the six by nine poly mailers. So if you wanna do it, you'd wrap it up and you just slide it in there, off you go. And it's pretty much crush proof as well. So these things are great for many, many, many different things. Uh, I use them literally for everything. Um, I even use them for posters. You tape six, eight of them together, and you've got a tube. Now, I don't mail them in these tubes, but there's really nothing wrong with mailing them in the tubes either. So if you really need something for a tube to mail in, these are great. But for storage, if you've got a whole bunch of posters in your inventory, you don't want to lay them flat. If you lay them, you know, rolled up in something without having protection on the outside of them, they can get crushed very, very easily just by a stupid mistake. But you store like eight or ten of them in here. You can put a little posty and just tape it on the outside. So write a little note, put tape over it, tape it on the outside. If you change it, tape a new piece of paper over it. There's nothing to it whatsoever. So we use these for everything you can imagine. It'll block off, obviously, this. But these are used, too, for some records. Now, again, size-wise, you can do them in any direction you want. This is three of them. This is two of them. Here's a bunch of double wide ones for postcards and things like that. Again, here's, you know, four of them together. Same basic thing. So depending on the space, you can make a whole bunch of these. We've got a huge big tote of these. They're all put together. And then we've got a whole big tote of just these. So every one that we get goes into a big tote. I just grabbed a few just to show you. Now, one other thing you want to think about too if you've already got tape left on it, sometimes there's that tape that's hard to get off at the end of the day. Just pull the whole thing off. You have to take all the tape off. Otherwise, you're going to have problems with it sticking. So that's all you do. There's a little piece that's going to hurt, but I try to get it all off. I guess maybe that's just me. It doesn't matter if you rip it up or something like that. It's just going to be taped over. So now the tape, new tape, will stick right across it. So you just wrap it around the outside edges here, wrap it this way. And I usually wrap it this way too, just so nothing's sticky on the outside of it. In that way, nothing's going to get in there and nothing's going to damage the items that are stored in there. Again, it's, it's a simpleton thing. So if you sell records, 78 specifically, you can do this a smaller version with 45s, but we store them standing up. All of our discs are stored standing up. This goes at the edge, so then you'll have 78s here, and then you'd have another one of these on the opposite side. So the records are pretty much protected. This gives a little bit. It's not rigid, so each one of these moves just a little bit, 
So a record's not going to break when it gets pushed against it on one corner or in any, in any spot along there. These are bumpers, we call them around here. So you, you make two of them for a bin. You can pile some of this stuff behind them. That way there's nothing going to happen. So it works great if they don't uh, fall off the table. But it works great on these for a record. 78. In fact, I've got some right here to give you an idea what I'm talking about. So it goes in the bin. This protects them on the back, so when they're in storage, it's only thunking up against this. There's no extra really free space, so it's not going to do much to it. I've never had one broken or damaged in storage, even when I'm moving them around or anything else like that, when I'm using one of these bumpers at the back side of the, the uh, tote that we carry them in, or store them in, I should say. So if you're not using these, you're not saving these up, you're losing some free things that will help you in listing and storage and the whole works. I store everything in plastic. So if I'm taking uh, listings of cards, they're going in, in a bin like this. There's going to be some dividers that says, in fact, let's just pull one out to give you an idea. I've shown these before, so it's no secret, but this is the basic gist of it. So everyone's in a specific section. Now I mix all different types of paper in here because it's really easy to tell the difference between a postcard, a trade card, a Three Stooges card versus a 1870s card. So it doesn't matter you know, what's mixed in these, but you can see that's P53, P54, P55, P56, 57, 58, and then on the fronts of each one of these is the number. Now, we messed up on this one. I think we added one in afterwards, but so this one carries inside here P50 through P61. So here's P50. Everything that's listed on eBay in P50 is in this bin. All the way back here, P61, everything that's listed on eBay is uh, that's in P61 is back here too. Nice little bird or oh I guess those are a little mice family in the back so that's how these work and then when it's not full and you don't want it to slide around you just slide one of those into the back it keeps it tight so these can't bounce around stuff can't get bent none of the corners are going to get dinged or chipped up or anything else like that when you uh, get back down and you need to fill it back up, you take this out and you list whatever you need to list. I have always a little piece of cardboard or one of these dividers in here. Now, there's specific ones that are designed for postcards. And I've had people tell me, well, you should just get the ones that are already because what I have to do is I have to cut these down to fit in here. And I order these by the thousand. These aren't, you know, super, super expensive or anything, but these work great. Now, the reason I use these from Walmart uh, and I buy them in mass quantity. I, I get a whole bunch of them. Here's lids for a whole stack. We buy them in, I think, eight or ten at a shot quite often. With these, I can fit more of these on my shelves. If I bought the postcard boxes, they're bigger. And they're squared off. It's a, it takes up a lot more room. That's the biggest factor here, the postcard ones. So with these, I can get one whole more stack of two, three, or four of these high on one of my shelves. And that's the biggest plus. It's, it's the amount of space I can use by getting smaller containers and just spending a few extra moments cutting each one of these. I cut like a dozen at a time. I just use a pair of scissors. It's really easy to cut this stuff. So it's nothing super, super, uh, you know, time consuming or anything else like that. This is the best way I've found for pieces of paper of any kind. Stamps, postcards, trade cards, baseball cards, football, everything can be stored in bins like this. I know a lot of people use the 500 count, you know, uh, trade card boxes for some of the larger ones and stuff. But, you know, I use these. They're cheap. When the lid's on too, when the lid's on right, it, water was just going to roll off if there's any uh, leaks coming in or you had a pipe blow or, you know, water damage or whatever. That helps them too. Everything that's listed goes in one of these. So when you're listing them, if you only have one little stack, you stick one of these back here or you can stick one of these back there or whatever the case may be. The same thing for records. Um, I use these for 45s. You can take four of these together for 45s if you wish. One of these is pretty good for it as well. For LPs, we just throw some of these or we'll just grab one of these. So either way we go, it works great. Anyway, these work great for pretty much anything. And again, as I said, I use them for everything. The 78 one, these are the best thing. I have not had any damage in storage when using these bumpers like this here. Now here's a super item that we reuse constantly. This is a whole bin of just small reusable Ziploc baggies. 
Now, everything that we have in storage, we have to separate. We have to label them so we know where to find them and how to find them. Now, inside here is probably three or 400 listings, maybe, individual listings. Maybe it's even 500. I'm not sure. We've got about six or 7,000 of these up right now, these buttons. Um, let's pop out and just give you an idea on how it's done. So this is the main bag that H1, H2, H3, H4, H5, and H6 are stored in. I can change this. I can reuse the bag if it pops a leak or there's a hole punched in it. I just put a piece of tape over it. These last for a couple years very, very easily. So I, I don't mail anything out in these at all. So everything that I mail out goes in something that's a lot cheaper to mail in than that. So again, there's H1. There's H2 right there, H2, H3, H4, H5, H6. Now let's show you what's inside of H6. That's the bag on this one. So again, let's pop this one back out. So we've got this big bag right there. Again, this is the easiest way to store coins, action figures, buttons, anything small. Anything that you have small that you can, uh, that you need to store, that you've got quantity of, I store them in stuff like this. Coins, tokens, jewelry, pins, whatever it is, belts, buckles, it goes in a bag like this. It's a lot cheaper than buying plastic for everything, and these last a while. So again, I've got a bag for H6. There's another bag right here that looks just like this, but with H5. And then inside of here, then I have it separated again. So I've got H6A, H6B, uh, C, and D. So when I figure out, let's say I just sold a button that's marked as H6D, I've just pulled that bag out, I pulled this bag out, then I've pulled this out, and then it's just a matter of dunking them out. Now they're usually separated a little bit here, so you can tell fairly easily, these are all the same, these are all the same, um, these are all the same type. These are New York buttons, New York Regimental. These look uh, more state seals. And then these are all from Arkansas. So it's pretty easy. We've separated them even inside of the bag. So we've got four different types of separation going on. So I can track down individual items. So let's just give you an example. There's two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There's 22 listings in this one little bag. These are 22 individual listings that are running currently on eBay right now. And each one of these bags has 25 to say 40 or even more in each one of those. So one of these bags could theoretically have two or 300 in on its own. It's hard to say. Just depends on how many I stuck in there. It's just how easy it is to store and pull these out. So everybody asks, well, how do you find something when you have 6,000 of items that look nearly identical? You, you put them in bags, you separate them. I don't have to buy big bags or big bins or anything else that costs more. These are all reusable, as I said, until they're trashed out. I get a heck of a lot of use. I have not had to replace a single one of any of these bags I've showed you yet out of current inventory. It hasn't happened yet at all. You can buy them in bulk like this, and again, they're reusable. So when I sell something out of these, I take just the item out, and if it's something like that and small, I use one of these, because these are like half a cent, or it's, it's dirt cheap. I buy these by the five or 10,000 count, and when you buy them at that, that many at a time, they're dirt cheap. So even if I use the last bag in one of these, I just take it out, it goes in here. In fact, here's one from another one that we already sold all the items out of. And I'll just put another sticker on it when I go to put it back in here. And that's not a sticker. That's just a posty note. I wrote some number on a posty note and I put a piece of tape over it and that's it. So these are completely reusable. And sometimes too, to make it easier so we can mix stuff up, I'll use different colors. That's blue, yellow, and red. And I'm just buying, you know, Ziploc baggies. It's got a certain amount. I buy great value. I try to buy these in the big, giant-sized ones like this, but half the time they don't have this stuff nowadays. Now, I could buy these from the same source I get these from, but uh, again, it, it just depends. Sometimes these are on sale. These are pretty darn close in price because they're custom ones. I even use the bag, this bag, that the other little bags came in. So any way you can save, reuse, or make stuff last longer, or not have to invest a big bunch of money to begin with, you're going to save, you're gonna come out ahead. Everything I showed you, the 
cardboard, the baggies. I use every single day of my life, multiple times, probably 50 times a day, every day of my life. I'm touching, using, putting something in these, marking them, using these to cushion or bumper items all the time. Again, it doesn't look like much, but those cardboard inner cores from the tape are extremely handy. I've, I, I swear you, I've used these things for 10 plus years every single one gets saved. I have never recycled or trashed any of these because they're always used to store and save and bumper and cushion and all that kind of stuff too. So anyway, that's about it for today. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. When entering the world of art, you'd be smart to dress the part. Gentlemen prefer hands. With all the ladies draped in crepe, the artist loves the human shape. Gentlemen prefer hands. Hands will make you smooth and silky, shapely, sexy. Wear a pair and you could be captured for posterity. Gentlemen prefer hands.